in a studio this afternoon. I am joined by Gamaretzi Mohai, an environmental specialist and executive director at Geoflux, uh, to discuss how circular business models can reshape Botswana's industrial landscape, drive sustainable growth, and position the country as a regional leader in green innovation. A very good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Afternoon. Um, first and foremost, let's just get into you know practical circular uh, economy models that we as a country can adopt. Thank you for that. Um, before I get to the circular business models, mm -hmm. let me just give context, of course, to why we're here and to why we're discussing this today. Mm. Um, there is green economy and circular economy. Green economy has been there for quite some time and entrepreneurs and business people as well as policy makers seem to understand green economy better. Mm. Of late we hear of circular economy which has become topical and there is therefore need to differentiate between the two. Right. Green economy's emphasis is more on environmental conservation mm. while circular economy is more on product longevity mm. Uh, economic value as well as extending the life of a product and resource. Right. When we talk in terms of secular business models, we're talking in terms of strategies mm -hmm. that businesses and entrepreneurs could adopt in terms of product design, in terms of innovating their operations, markets through digitization and other means so that they expand their value chains, they create other industries mm. and they reduce environmental harm as well as resource exploitation. Right. So secular economy practices and approaches have become topical today looking at the need for diversification mm. as well as the need for employment creation mm -hmm. as long as the need for protecting our environment and reducing our environmental footprint. Mm. Right. And I think for a while there, uh, Mayor Mohai, we have been ignorant of the value chain in waste management. And maybe that is where, correct me if I'm wrong, that is where now we can now start, you know, implementing and adopting all of these uh, circular economy business models that we're speaking of. Yeah, you are right. For a long time, waste has been considered as waste. Mm. Secular economy approach requires that we now view this waste as a resource in what in secular economy terms is now called waste valorization. And this waste valorization takes place in different ways. It can be through product valorization, it can be chemical valorization, it can be energy valorization, or even biological. Mm. Um, what uh, this simply means is converting waste into economic resources. And in the process, reducing the problem of waste management. As an example, we currently have a lot of landfills in our country. Some of them have reached the end of life. Therefore, we need more land to construct landfills. Already the land is scarce. So if we take waste that ultimately ends up at the landfills and we put them into some productive use through secular economy practices, through what I termed waste valorization, we are solving the problem of waste management, mm -hmm. we are solving the problem of land demand, mm. we are creating employment, we are also introducing other value chains into the waste industry. Waste, if it is treated with the circularity in mind, it can be converted to energy. Mm. They are processes that, processes and technology, innovative ways through which waste can be converted into energy, Waste can be converted into fertilizers and manure. Waste can be converted into many other products that are of economic use and that are also there to meet our human and societal needs. Mm. So waste should therefore, if we are adopting this approach of secular economy, should no longer be termed waste, but rather a resource. A resource. They say 
resources are not, they become, unless and until you find a utility for that waste, they will remain waste. Mm. But the moment through innovative ways and technology, you convert that waste into resources, now they become resources just like diamond. Right. Can you believe that? All our landfills are currently with a lot of waste. Some, like I said, they are full. But in there lies the resource mm. that can be used for economic diversification, that can be used to produce products, that can be used for, to help us meet our energy sufficiency, etc. Right, right. Which, which all at the end just helps support uh, you know, our mandate of becoming a green economy. That is, that is what I'm learning as, as you're explaining all of this to us. Now, uh, let's get into talking about, uh, you know, policy reforms that, uh, you know, are required in order to support uh, this mandate or, you know, the circular economy and uh, as well attract investors into that area. Thank you again for that. Um, when I talked about waste, I confined myself to waste in the landfills. Mm. But interestingly, every industry has waste. Mining, there's mining waste, there's agricultural waste, there's waste produced everywhere. And this waste will remain waste or as waste until we have policy reforms. If I were to give an example of waste as in mining waste, mm. because currently there is no policy or regulation that requires the mining industry to mainstream circularity into their processes and operations, we end up with huge dumps of mining waste. Mm. Because there is no law that requires them to do that, save for the Waste Management Act, which talk briefly in terms of waste recycling and reusing. But in terms of the real circular economy approach, and mainstreaming and integration into the processes wherein industries can actually come out of the process. Mm. Other industries that are not necessarily the core business of that particular industry, we are still going to be here. So we need robust mm. policy reforms. Right. We need political will. We need laws. We need regulations mm. that will actually require as of necessity that all industries sector-wide should demonstrate how apart from their core business they are going to integrate and come up with other secondary industries mm. to their line of business where there will be zero waste secular economy is about designing out waste and pollution right the moment you inbuilt it there in your processes we expect very very little waste so the moment as a country we continue being comfortable and allowing industries to produce so much waste that we end up not knowing what to do with it it means we are not on the right track mm. it means we're not on the right track right. this will also apply even in terms of tourism mm. the standards tourism standards should actually in there incorporate the secularity practices the secularity requirements. And how have we been doing, you know, across all industries and sectors in that aspect? Um, like I'm saying, in Botswana, it's like a new concept, despite the fact that I mentioned earlier on that we do have a waste management act and waste mm -hmm. management strategy that talks about recycling, reusing. There's no enforcement. And in terms of real real application of secularity measures into business and operations. We don't have such. Mm. We wouldn't be having a lot of mining waste. We wouldn't be having full landfills that are full to the brim as we speak if indeed we were implementing secular e economy measures in our processes. So we are doing badly if you ask me. Mm. But this is an imperative. This is where our diamond lies. And this is the way we will have the diamond is forever Mm. Because you continue having waste, and if you inbuilt your, your, your circular economy in there, the circularity will ensure we don't have waste, but we have many other secondary industries coming out of, out of um, many other industries. And it becomes a network of industry 
and employment creation will come out of mm. there. A lot of stuff that we are importing will come out of there. Our energy sufficiency will come out of there. So it is an imperative. We should have done this yesterday, mm. not today. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, time, time. <laughs> but it's better late than never. Better late than never. Yeah. So uh, can we just, uh, you know, just quickly in 10 seconds, because we're out of time, uh, are, are we taking the right steps towards, uh, you know, implementing this, adopting these uh, different strategies and doing better in, uh, you know, uh, going further and forward in, uh, you know, the circular economy? Um, yes and no. The fact that we have started dialoguing mm. about it, around it, it's a good step in the right direction. But unless, we, unless and until we ensure full resource recovery, circularity approaches, sharing platforms, we are not on the right track. Mm. Unless this is supported by law, currently it's voluntary. We don't have policies to support it. We don't have laws to support it. It's voluntary. Mm. Industries and sectors are not required to demonstrate how they have um, incorporated Circularity in their processes. Mm. We are in the right direction. We have started talking. Sustainability is leading the pack. We are there following, supporting it. We are there as GeoFlux, also making sure that we offer services. We do feasibility studies mm. uh, to ensure that we assist industries to incorporate circularity in their processes, in their operations. We are in the right, in the right direction insofar as we are doing that. But this is not supported by law, it's voluntary. Mm. Mm. It's voluntary. And, and I think that is, this is, uh, you know, one uh, one of the things that we did touch on just a while back when I had a similar conversation that putting this into law and making it compulsory for, you know, every industry to, you know, produce that, then that's when we can start saying, okay, now we are actually stepping into the right direction. But like you said, uh, for the mere fact that dialogue has began in that aspect, uh, we can just hope and uh, believe that something will be done in that aspect, you know, policy-wise and on the side of the law to support this and make it, uh, you know, compulsory. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. You're welcome. Of course. There we have it. That was Kiamuretsi Mohai, Environmental Specialist and Executive Director of uh, Geoflux, uh, where we were on the conversation of circular economy, uh, her giving us a bit more context on what circular economy is and what needs to be done in order to step in the right direction to ensure circularity uh, you know, in our economy when we talk about these resources, not just waste.